Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about how we can draw cards in the color white. Let's jump right into it. Starting off with the creatures that are going to help us draw, we have Pure Steel Paladin. This is all about equipment, so if your deck is focused on equipment entering the battlefield, this is a great one and it also makes it where the equip cost is only going to cost zero. You no longer have to pay one mana to equip Swiftfoot Boots. But again, you can only do this if you have three or more artifacts, and this is very likely in an equipment deck. Next is Saram Senior Edificer. This is mainly going to be a Voltron Commander, but you can also put this in equipment decks and you're going to be drawing a lot of cards. Mentor of the Meek is probably the best out of all the card draw I'm going to be mentioning. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield, under your control we can pay one and we get to draw a card. So white makes a huge amount of tokens. We can just pay one whenever one of our creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield and we're drawing cards. Mesa Enchantress will specifically focus on enchantments. So if we're an enchantment deck, this is another great one to use. The last creature is Mindless Automaton. It's going to enter with two plus one plus one counters, but we can remove two counters to draw a card. So if your deck has a lot of plus one plus one counters that you're going to be putting on your creatures, this is a great one to add. Now moving on to the artifacts, we have Skull Clamp. This is actually probably better than Mentor of the Meek because we can pay one to equip it to a creature and when it dies we can draw two cards. Next is Carnage Altar. It's a lot worse. We have to pay three, sacrifice a creature, and then we get to draw a card. But since we have so many creatures, it's not going to matter. Endless Atlas. We can pay two and draw a card, but we can only activate this if we have three or more lands with the same name. If we're mono white, this is very likely and another great one to draw cards with. Idol of Oblivion. If we make a lot of tokens, this is one I really have to recommend. Tome of Legends. If you have a lot of ETBs of your commander or your commander likes to attack a lot, this is a great one. It's going to have you drawing a lot of cards because when your commander enters a battlefield or attacks, we put a counter on Tome of Legends. We can pay one or remove a counter to draw a card, so every turn we get an extra card to draw. Arcane Encyclopedia. For three and tapping it, we get to draw a card. Jalem Tome. We pay two, draw a card, and then discard a card. We can take advantage of this with our decks that love a lot of interaction with our graveyard. Phyrexian Vault, another really bad sack outlet. We have to pay two, tap it, sacrifice a creature, and then we get to draw a card. Again, we don't care about how many creatures that we're sacking, because we have a million probably. The bad part is that we have to tap Phyrexian Vault. We can't keep repeating this. Staff of Domination, you'd have to pay five, tap it to draw a card. So if we have a million mana, that doesn't matter. But again, you really don't want to pay five to draw a card. Well of Knowledge, any player may pay two mana during their draw phase to draw a card. So this is also going to help our opponents, but we can do this as many times as we want. So if we have that extra mana lying around, we're going to be drawing cards. Cosmos Elixir. At the beginning of our upkeep, we're going to draw a card if our life is greater than our starting life total. Otherwise, we're going to gain two life. So if we're a life gain deck, I think this is a great option to put in there. Embassy Tome, we can pay five, tap it, draw two, then discard a card. Not amazing, but again, if we have interaction with our grave, this is one we could probably use. Jam Day Tome, we can pay four, tap it, draw a card. Seer Sundial, is okay. It's been reprinted a lot. It has landfall, so whenever we play a land, we can actually pay two mana, and then we can draw a card. White does not have a lot of landfall triggers or a lot of lands to be played, but this is also another way to be drawing cards. Tower of Fortunes. We can pay eight, tap it, draw four cards. White doesn't have a lot of mana, so... This is an option, but it's kind of far out there. Well of Lost Dreams. This is more likely to happen because when we gain life, and in white, that's very likely, we can pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gain. If you do draw X cards, this is really sweet, and I really recommend this one. Bargaining Table. We can pay X and tap it to draw a card, but X is the number of cards in an opponent's hand. So maybe if our opponents rarely have any cards in their hand, this would be one to add. Farsight Mask. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you, if Farsight Mask is untapped, you may draw a card. The art in this card is really spot on because we're going to get hit to be able to draw cards. But this can go in a deck like Darien. I think this would actually work really well. It wants to take damage from our opponents and also we're going to be drawing cards from it. Yeah, this is a great one to add. Mercadian Atlas. At the end of your turn, if you didn't play a land this turn, you may draw a card. This isn't too bad. I wish it was a little bit less for the mana cost, but again, we're not playing a lot of lands in white, so this might actually be good. Mind's Eye. A little bit better than Mercadian Atlas in my opinion, but when an opponent draws a card, we can pay one, and if we do, we get to draw a card. But again, it's requiring a lot of mana 
in order to draw cards, and we'll have to end up paying six mana just to draw one card. Moonring Mirror for five. Whenever we draw a card, we're going to remove the top card of our library from the game. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove your hand from the game face down. If you do, put into your hand all other cards you own removed from the game with Moonring Mirror. So every one of our upkeeps, we can switch our hand with all the cards that we've been exiling, so maybe this will give us more options in white. But what's really sweet is that it says May. We don't have to leave our hand and switch it for the exiled cards. Book of Rest, we can pay two mana, pay two life, and draw a card. This is okay, but again, we have to pay two mana, so that can get kind of annoying, but the two life I think will be fine in white. Lore Seeker Stone, we have to pay three, tap it, draw three cards. This ability costs one more to activate for each card in your hand. This can be really good. We can end up having zero cards in our hand and just paying three, tapping this to draw three. The likelihood of that happening, not very well. We might have to end up paying four or five mana to draw three cards, but still that's really good in white. Staff of Nin, at your upkeep you get to draw a card and we can also tap it to deal one damage to any target. I think the one damage isn't really gonna matter, but this is six mana just to be able to draw a card at our upkeep. Not really what I recommend. Well of Discovery, at the end of your turn, if you control no untapped lands, draw a card. I don't know how likely this is because we might want to hold up some mana to have a removal spell. But if your deck has a lot of just no untapped lands, this is a great one for you. Inheritance. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may pay three mana, and if you do, you get to draw a card. So when a creature dies, whether it's ours or our opponents, we can pay three mana to draw a card. That's a lot of mana, but a lot of creatures die throughout the game, so this might be worth it, especially for one white mana. Dawn of Hope. If you're a life gain deck, you're going to love this card, and if you have no creatures, you can pay four to make a soldier with lifelink. Armistice. It's an enchantment where we can pay three and two white. We get to draw a card, and target opponent gains three. This really stinks, but card draw in white just doesn't really exist. Convalescent Care. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have five life or less, you gain three and draw a card. So if we can abuse losing a lot of life and staying under that five life and hopefully not dying from our opponents, we can draw cards with this. Martyr's Cry. We can pay two white, exile all white creatures. For each creature exiled this way, its controller draws a card. If we have a lot of white soldier creature tokens, we can be drawing a lot of cards. And that's if we don't care about our creatures because we're going to have to exile them. Introduction to Prophecy. Now this is one of the new cards from Strixhaven. It's a sorcery and a lesson. We can scry two, then draw a card. So for three mana, that's actually really sweet, especially for white, because card draw isn't a thing. Secret Rendezvous. For three mana, us and another opponent are going to draw three cards. And it's at sorcery speed, so it's going to have to be on our turn. Maybe this card can help us with some politics with our opponents. I'll let you draw three, but you can't hit me next turn. Now moving on to the lands, we have Ark of Arazka. We can tap it to add a colorless, or we can pay five, tap it, draw a card. We can only activate this if we have the city's blessing. In white, it's very likely we're going to have ten or more permanents. So I think this would be a really cool land to add to our mono white decks. Bonders Enclave. We can tap it to add a colorless, or we can pay three, tap it to draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater. Now white doesn't really focus on bigger creatures, but if your deck does and has creatures that are usually power four or greater, this is a great one to add. Seagate Wreckage. We can pay two in a colorless, tap it, draw a card, activate this ability only if you have no cards in hand. It's very specific, but again, if we have no cards, this is a great option to use. And the last card we're going to talk about is War Room. We can tap it to add a colorless, or we can pay three and pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity, and then we can draw a card. If we're mono white, we can pay three, pay one life, to draw a card. This is really sweet, and it recently came out in Commander Legends, and it's been going up in price, so this may be one for you to grab. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like any of these cards, please use the link down below. It helps out the channel at no additional cost to you. And if you'd like to become a patron, you can also do that, and there are benefits to becoming one. You can get a signed card, or I can make a deck tech all about the commander that you want. Now, before I end the video, I want to give a shout out to Dragon Shield. This is not sponsored by them, but they're going to release their Harry Potter sleeves on May 28th. They'll have one of each Hogwarts house, and you can use these to sleeve up your new commander decks. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.